This is my blood, and only one of these 10 Venus flytraps are going to eat it at the end of this series. But how will we figure out which one deserves it the most? Well, they each have their own tactics, personalities, and experiences which they'll use to outdo each other and get the fastest time in this series, the Flytrap Games. Yet, there is something deadlier than a flytrap in this garden. Wasps. They've stolen flies right out of the flytrap's mouths, and they've also become the flytrap's catchers. Yet, despite this, they aren't the most difficult or rarest bugs to catch. And while watching Sharktooth catch one of these hull spawn is great, there's something much quicker, rarer, and more difficult to catch that Sharktooth knows all about. And while that wasp gave him 10 bonus points last episode, he'll never forget his first ever catch of the competition, which gave him a massive 14 bonus points. 14 bonus points that if he got again, could easily make him one of the finalists for my blood next episode. Yet, there's always a risk when going up against the black fly. Seeing as it is the most difficult bug to catch, the chance that he gets the three minute penalty from missing is much higher. A penalty that means he might never be able to taste that drop of blood and find out if he really is 0.001% shark like he claims to be. Yet, he does have some interesting strategies. He's let this fly move into one of his other traps, which might be a mistake. It's possible that he's using the make the fly feel safe strategy, which could work well for this agile fly, yet this also means his average catch time will go up. Yet, that's the risk you've got to take when catching the rarest bug in the competition. Oh damn, that strategy nearly worked. It's like he hesitated, which gave the fly just enough time to get between his teeth and jump out before he could even close. This is a major hit to his position on the leaderboard. Unless his catch next episode breaks records, he's pretty much out of the running for the prize. Now it might be true that if he had longer teeth, this fly would have got caught. But as Dracula proved last episode, short teeth isn't a bad thing. And if anything, he's shown that he's taking this competition very seriously. So seriously, in fact, that he is currently in first position with such a good time that his bonus points have given him credit. And honestly, seeing as he is so mysterious and that no one knows anything about him, it's concerning to think about what a flytrap called Dracula would do with my blood. Hopefully he'd only grow bigger so that he can duplicate and make more deadly fly traps and hold back all the flies in summer. But a small part of me wonders if he might get addicted to the blood and find a way to get me at night. Dracula is still feeding on bugs for now and he has his eye on his next victim, a juicy blue fly. Once again, he is using his intelligence instead of relying on long teeth, as everything in the flytrap world is about timing. He could have closed by now, but by giving this fly some extra time, it'll edge itself into the best possible spot. He is always so composed when he catches his prey. Every single time he gets a bug, it's always a confident and controlled catch without hesitation. That's not something all the flytraps can brag about. Take Tiger Teeth for instance. Ever since he messed up in episode 6, he's become such a nervous wreck that he's hesitated in every single catch. Even a 3 month break to create new traps didn't help. He actually seems to have gotten worse. Now it could be from inexperience, or it could be because he feels like he isn't useful anymore as the wasp war is over. Regardless, he's just not doing well. In fact, it's so bad that Peaches 
the only plant doing worse than him could actually overtake him if she ends up catching something. And after her argument with Red last night, it's very possible that her catches might change seeing as she's finally got his attention. But until her catch later, Tiger Teeth has got a grubby blue fly here, which could be his saving grace. And by using his addictive nectar, he looks like he'll be able to pull this fly into his trap. This is what helped him do so well in episode 3, but if he can't capitalize on this opportunity now, then his time in the competition is over. Once again, this isn't a surprise. This is just pure hesitation. He's always either too slow to catch the fly or too fast, which scares flies away before they're in the right spot. And while some plants do catch flies by moving extremely slowly, I'm pretty sure Tiger Teeth doesn't even know about this tactic. Yet having a tactic, an insanely messed up and twisted tactic is exactly what Peaches has been doing. She's fooled everyone into thinking that she's just a helpless plant joining the competition to support her friend, Red. Yet, as it turns out, she's missed all of her catches on purpose to get Red's attention. And it has worked perfectly up until last episode. Every single one of her catches could have worked out perfectly, yet she purposefully lets her catches out. And every time she does this, Red doesn't end up catching a fly that day, which gives them more time together in the greenhouse. And more time together means that they can flower together and make some seeds. All of this without Red even knowing until last episode. What's more surprising, however, is that Red doesn't even mind making seed with her. He's just upset that she has missed every single catch on purpose, which means she might have a new tactic today in her last catch of the Flytrap games. Now, seeing as she has secretly been growing 13 babies over the past few months while pretending to be sick, she has traps everywhere. So the only one that will count for her today is the one in the middle. And after Red argued that she can't lose to a cultivar, not only is she attracting a ton of flies here, but she might pull off a Dracula level catch. Remember this catch doesn't count, but every time she has caught a fly like this, she has let it escape. This just shows what getting some attention can do to a fly trap. And there it is. A catch that is as quick as the top competitors in the games, all from a plant pretending to be useless. And to top it all off, this has managed to put her just above Tiger Teeth, which is a huge slap in the face to us, him, and all the other cultivars in the competition. All of this just so she can get some attention from Red. <sighs> Yet, unlike Peaches, who is now working with Red, there are some plants that are working against each other in a battle for fame. DCXL and B52, the world's most famous Venus flytrap. Seeing as DCXL was created to outdo B52, he has been holding a lot of stress on his leaves. So much stress in fact, that he completely choked up and missed last episode. After this king, B52, absolutely dismantled his previous world record and set his own. And on top of setting a new world record, B52 improved his score so much that he even pulled himself within 5 seconds of overtaking DCXL, all from one catch. And seeing as they're now pretty even, our baby B52 is feeling so confident that he's taking on a giant blue fly that's nearly bigger than his traps. Oh, oh damn, and he's got it. It barely fits in his trap, but he's managed to hold it back. He's just proving his worth here by making it impossible for DCXL to catch him. Bear in mind that B52 is literally still a baby plant, and if he's catching flies like this, he's going to be a monster when he gets bigger. 
And seeing as DCXL is also a baby who should have traps rivaling the size of B-52s when he gets older, one can only imagine what their greenhouse is going to look like when summer comes around. Yet this doesn't answer the question of which one is better. Although DCXL is falling behind, B-52 still has one more catch to go, which could move him below DCXL if he performs badly next episode. And if DCXL gets a really good time today, in his last ever catch, then he could pull ahead and claim the title of the King of the Flytraps. This is one of the few times the skeleton of a catch is being used as part of a strategy in this series. We usually see it on our shorts channel, but having the skeleton in a trap attracts other predators, who think they found an easy meal. But an interesting fact that isn't really spoken about is that flies like to clump together. That's why they generally eat poop together instead of all alone. Oh, he caught the fly backwards! This is such an interesting tactic as usually flies focus on the traps or the nectar. But this is probably the first time a fly has got caught because he wasn't interested in the trap. Now this catch has moved DCXL into 6th position, so one can only wonder if B-52 will double down for the prize or relax in the final episode which is already out and on screen. Our top contestants, Dracula, Sharktooth and the most dominant flytrap in the entire series, Crosstooth, make their last appearance next episode and we'll find a winner worthy of my blood after a full year of this competition. So please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and I'll see you there.